Okay, gang. I'm gonna show you how to bullnose all this stuff real quick. And we're using this, uh, this is a travertine tile. So it's called chocolate travertine. Three by six, you can get it in 12 by 12, 18 by 18, six by six. So we're doing the subway design in there. So I just wanted to show you how I do this. You got a profile wheel, you get the pads. I'll, I'll show, I'll, I'll put a picture. That's right, I'm using the blaster. It's a virtual speed grinder. You need this for polishing because you need different speeds for different uh, different profile wheels you're going to use. In this 3 8 inch profile wheel, I use a medium speed. Uh, hit the subscribe today. It's right down there on your left. You don't want to miss out on these awesome videos. Um, as you can see, I'm just going along. I'm, I keep the blaster at a medium speed for this profile reel. That's why it's such a good to have a versatile speed on this. And you notice I got this thing firm in my hands at a 90 degree angle to the bull nose. Um, later on in the video, I speed it up because it's really not much to bull nose in. Just keep it at firm 90 degrees and make sure all these edges are lined up. You know, this rig I got going, I got it on a, a picnic table. And like it says, go slow and steady. If you've never done this before, watch this video a couple of times. And then you'll be able to do it. The main thing is, when you're bullnosing, is to have a flat surface. And use your, your whole body with this blaster. Keep it steady. That's, you know, that's, that's the key is keeping this slow and steady. And have, try to clamp this down as best as possible. This, this rig I got going is okay. I'm using my six-foot level. Some clamps. The main thing is I got a piece of wood on the back there that these pieces don't slide uh, backwards. It, it keeps them all at the same distance. So I'm, when I'm going along with this uh, blaster... They're not moving back at all. Yeah, they may move forward a little bit. As you can see, i got to readjust them to make sure. Now I'm going to go over and put my little uh, box on here to make sure absolutely they don't slide back. That's that's one of the key things. That, because you want that edge to stay all the same. And like I said, I've sped this up. And that's about it to this 3 8 inch profile wheel. Okay, we're done with the profile wheel, we're done with this, now we put on our, uh, where is it, it must be getting tired, where is it, oh, right here, multi-speed so I keep it on the slowest a little bit one always goes slow I start off with 50 and these are the pads I'll be using and I work up to a hunt to 400 since this is a home finish so here we go uh, what I'm using are these uh, they're called dry polishing pads and I keep my blaster on slow. That's why this thing is so awesome to use. It's got this virtual, you know, different speeds on it. It's a little, it's a little knob on the bottom of the grinder. And I just go over it. It's really not much to bullnose. And once you get that profile wheel, that thing works excellent. I used to do this with grinders and all kinds of things but once I found that profile wheel oh man it was a dream it made this so much easier and I just go back and forth and I get comfortable you know, just like I said just go back and forth back and forth and as you can see I speed up the video because once you get the hang of it it's really not much to it Use your hips, and this is a little trick I use with the grinder. Uh, 
100. Same speed. And yes, keep it at the same speed. That is that is the trick that I found out. I used to go uh, have my grinder at uh, high speed. I used to use a cheap grinder that had no versatile speed on there. When I come to find out what I was doing is I was uh, burning the pads into the stone because I was going way too fast. I, I didn't get it until I watched somebody do this at a slab shop. And they said uh, the key was keep the grinder on slow. And use your hips. You can see how I'm not really moving. I'm just going back and forth. I'm letting the grinder do all the work. Two hundred. The reason why I like to get down here is because you're going to see this edge, and I like to make sure there's it's perfect. So, and I polish this. So. And the reason why I polish that edge and I make it nice and straight because you can see that it's like a finished edge. Once you put them up somewhere, you look down at them. And get get comfortable. Like you can see I'm just using one hand sometimes. I get up and I start using my hips. I'm going like a seesaw back and forth. Back and forth. And you're going to go through these pads 50, 100, 200, and then the 400. There is no 300 pad. So on this one. And last but not least. 400 and I'm only going 400 because this is a home finish so normally if you want to make this real shiny you go up to 3,000 but since it's just a home fish I figure on that this one 400 works perfect you'll see it brings up just enough shine on most home finished uh, tile you only want to go up to 400 because you don't want to give it a brilliant shine because the, the tile on a home surface is kind of uh, shiny but dull. Uh, it's, it's mainly just taking your time and not going too fast on this. Keep an edge on the Keep an eye on the edge. And they're asking me, when are they going to be done? And I, at this point, I've been doing this for the last two days on this kitchen. It takes a while to build those. And I slowed down the video so you could really see me do this technique. This keeps it nice and round. Because as you're going back and forth, you're creating a flat surface on there. So this kind of helps give it a nice, a better round. So... You can see my, my hands are lightly on the grinder, just seesawing. That should do it. Yeah, all polished. Oh, yeah, be real careful when you're taking this stuff apart. I've taken apart, and then a couple of them fell. I'm just, oh my goodness. So, be careful. So when you polish them like this, they all have a unique edge to them. They fit together like a puzzle. So I'm going to be doing this side of the window and all this is polished. So I'm starting from here down. This is going to go up. So I'll just go one. Two. Three. And we're marking any kind of stone or even a uh, tile, use a pencil, not a sharp. 12. And I made two extra just in case one breaks. So I'll, I'll stack them, 12, 11. So number one is I'm going on the window, starts from the bottom and work up. So, so I know by using these, one is the, one is the beginning. So. I'll show you where these go. Come on, let's go. So these, I want to see my feet. These are going right on the whole thing. So, that's why I number because this one's going to start 
I care, number one, so. Let's check it out. That's done. It's gonna be over here today. And she finished over here. Pretty good, look at all those cuts. Nice. She's finished cleaning up. Pretty good. And tomorrow, we'll tackle that. Go to my awesome website, www.tilinginfo.com. I'll leave the link below. And these are some photos of that kitchen that I, that I bulldoze all the tile for. If you want to learn some more trick stuff on how to do awesome tile installations, hit, my, hit the subscribe below. You know what? Have a blessed, awesome day.